This is my new improved flight computer for a thrust vector control model rocket. I think it's a huge step forward compared to the previous one. It has much better power systems, integrated Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and was made to be user-friendly. It even runs a web server, but more about this later. The first flight computer did the job well. I was able to more or less successfully launch a thrust vector control model rocket with it. But it was far from ideal. It's heavy, has several design mistakes, and working with it sometimes was a nightmare. So I was really happy to call this project done and move forward. I learned a lot of hard lessons with the GLOW project and also had some fresh ideas I wanted to try. So I decided to start from scratch. I wanted to have an integrated wireless connection in my new device. So I decided to build around an ESP32 microcontroller that has built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. At the same time, I learned that there is a version of ESP32 that is built with RISC-V architecture, and I wanted to give it a chance. The other core decision was to switch to Rust programming language instead of C. I don't want to say a bad word about C, but it's not my favorite language. So I decided to learn Rust and use it at least for that project. And these two decisions gave a name for the project. Risk Rust Rocket, Triple R. I will go through all the significant hardware improvements I made. First of all, the new board has a USB Type-C port that could be used to flash software instead of an external programmer as it was before. This port can also be used to power the board and I also added very simple battery charger circuitry. So now it's possible to charge the battery with the USB port. This is a great relief because previously it was required to remove the flight computer from the rocket and it was also not possible to recharge in field. Now I can use any power bank to charge the rocket anywhere I want. The current from the battery goes to two bug boost converters. One provides 3.3 volts for the controller and other chips. The other one provides 5 volts for servo motors and pyro channels. And these guys are tiny compared to the monstrosity I had before. I also added a jumper to enable the board, or more precisely, to disable it, because I don't want to rely on that jumper in flight. Pyro systems that are used for ignition and parachute ejection were improved with detection circuitry. This allows to reliably check for proper wire connections before launch. Not having that was a bigger mistake that I thought. This indirectly led me to a failed launch once. The last part of the power system is a small battery monitoring IC that reports precise state of charge and battery voltage to the microcontroller. Other components on this side of the board are an inertia measurement unit for attitude estimation, a barometer for altitude measurements, flash memory for data logging, and colored LED for fun. I also decided to stop using pin headers and use GST connectors instead. That should be more robust. The overall weight and size were greatly reduced. It's at least two times lighter now. That's all about the hardware. But there is also one huge improvement that is not related to hardware directly. Previously, to control the flight computer, I used Bluetooth and a small self-written Android app on my phone. That worked quite well, but it's another part of the system that needs maintenance. Let's say you want to add a feature. First, you add it to the flight computer itself. Then you need to update the Android app as well and the Android app is written in a different language. That was very annoying, but now I can remove that part completely. That board has Wi-Fi and can connect to other networks or host its own access point. Let's say we start an access point. Then we can connect to it with a phone or any other device. 
Then we just go to the specific URL and get access to the control panel for the rocket. Because this thing is running a tiny web server and hosts this web page. So no special apps are required anymore. Any device with a browser can be used. For example, we can see here changes in the barometric altitude as I move the device up and down. And we also can communicate back some commands. Since I'm using Rust to program the board, I also used Rust to write the web page, the front end. Thanks to WebAssembly, that seems to be a good alternative for those who don't like JavaScript. So I don't have to separate software projects now. They become one thing, and this will save me a lot of time, I hope. I like this board very much, but it's more a proof of concept than the final device. I made some crucial mistakes in the schematics. Luckily, one can be solved by soldering components the wrong way, and the other one with a microscope and a sharp knife. Also, I realized that the RISC-V version of ESP32 is much less capable than other versions built with Extensa architecture. So the plan is to test this board extensively and then redesign it once again with a new controller and probably some other changes. And by the way, check out my GitHub. There are all design files for that board and also the software. Just keep in mind that it's a prototype right now. I am planning to have some fun with this board, so subscribe and you will not miss it. I hope you enjoyed the video, give it a like if you did, and have a wonderful day!